everyone, this is Yolanda from the Outcrafts channel and today's tutorial I'm just going to do a swatch to teach you how to do this double crochet back loop ripple st um, stitch. Uh, this one, if you just do just like this, the two little patterns, this is one pattern and then it just repeats across your row. Um, if you do just two patterns, this makes a great scarf as you could see or you could just do it even one pattern. Although when you do it just with one pattern, it doesn't show... I mean one repeat it doesn't show the pattern as much it still shows it but with this it'll give you a nice thicker scarf you can make use this pattern to make baby blankets anything from a baby blanket all the way to a king size blanket you could make it for scars for shawls uh, table runners whatever you want and um, this is just a repeating pattern like I said it repeats this is one repeat and here is another and I'm going to show you give you some idea, uh, tips on how you measure for your uh, blanket to see how wide you need it um, so here I just measured and I'll show you how I did that and then you just do your at your math you can use this pattern with any size hook any size any type of thickness of yarn just make sure that the yarn is appropriate for your hook in this sample I use a size J hook which is six millimeters and I use a medium size yarn so that it's appropriate for the yarn so if you look, use a baby, really thin, like a lightweight baby yarn, you might want to go with maybe a size F hook or E or F hook, depending on what you're using. So I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. I wanted to let everybody know that to this Saturday and Sunday, which is January the 11th and the 12th of 2014, I will be in Anaheim, California. Attending the Craft and Hobby Lobby, excuse me, Hobby Lobby. Jesus, I'm so used to going to Hobby Lobby. The Craft and Hobby Association show, which is CHA for industry people. It's not open to the public, but if you're going to be attending CHA in Anaheim, California, I would love to meet you. It's being held at the convention center, which is located located uh, across the street from Disneyland, or a little, you know, a little not right across, but right there in that same area. Uh, if you're in the, if you don't, not going to be attending, but if you're live near that area on Sunday after four o'clock, I should be free. Maybe you could come by, uh, and we could meet. I like to say hello. If there's enough people interested, maybe we could do a little meet and greet at a restaurant or a park. And I'd like to get to know some of the people that live here in Southern California that are subscribers. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. I love this little pattern. I know I said it's a chevron, it's a ripple stitch, and I said it's, some people call it chevron, but it's not the chevron. I'm sorry, I'm confused. This is a ripple stitch, ripple, double crochet, ripple stitch through the back loop only. I hope you like this tutorial, and let's get the party started. Hello everyone, this is Yolanda from the Outcrafts channel. Before we get started on this little chevron pillow, not pillow, um, pattern, I wanted to share some information with you. Uh, I'm going to be using a size J hook, which is a 10. It's 6.00 six millimeters. Uh, this is a tulip a hook that was bought for me as a gift for my friend Z. Thank you, Z. If you guys ever feel like sending me a gift, you can go ahead and send it to me at my post office box. I really love getting little gadgets and I just got a really nice little um, yarn threader uh, from a subscriber in Canada. So that was, thank you so much. Um, so here, what I'm going to be showing you, since every, this is just a little swatch I'm showing you, you're going to need to do a little bit of math. It won't be bad. So for the pattern here that repeats to do your little uh, points, it goes up and then down. And then it repeats again up and then down. And then so when you see it, you'll see the little points here. Like uh, these are going up and then down like a little uh, up, like a little uh, uh, triangle that keeps flipping up and up and down. So from this point here, from the first stitch to where the pattern starts repeating here, it's about five inches for me. So from this first stitch to the last stitch here before the pattern repeats, uh, it's there are going to be 15 chains here but in order for us to move on to the next pattern we need to add two more so the actual pattern repeat is uh, 17 here okay 17 chains and then if you want to do one last here which is the last one that's 15 okay so we're going to work here so for me if I measure from here to where my pattern is going to repeat it's about five inches okay so for me it's about five inches you're going to check and see what is your 
gauge uh, 5 inches is about 12 and a half centimeters so since I'm using a larger hook a size J with a medium weight yarn it comes to about 5 inches my first pattern repeat if you're using baby yarn and a smaller hook like say E, e or F of course it's going to be smaller so you're going to have to measure to see how many uh, these repeats you're going to have to do Usually I do my baby blankets between 35, 33 to 35 inches. So if I wanted to do this pattern, you don't want to, do not stretch it out. Let it sit naturally. So if I put that one there, you could see that it's about 5 inches. Uh, a little bit less than 5 inches because I'm not repeating at the end. But so if I want to do my repeats, I know it's 5 inches. So then I would know that I need to do, um, uh, for, for this, I would need to repeat my pattern, um, uh, seven times or so okay everyone so here since I said that from my first stitch to my first repeat it's about 35 excuse me it's about five inches and I usually make my baby blankets about 35 inches wide so then I know that here there's 17 stitches if I want it to be 35 inches across I need to repeat this uh, seven times right seven times five is 35 and so then here I know there's 17 stitches so what you need to do is just it's going to be different for every person because you're depending unless you do you crochet exactly like mine or if the exact size doesn't matter and you want to make a baby one so here I know I have 17 there and I'm going to have to put in 17 and then I'm going to multiply by the number of repeats I need which is 7 in this case to get to 35 inches across so then I would need to start with 119 chains to make a blanket that's approximately 35 inches wide which is about 89 centimeters so that's how you're going to do your math just repeat your chains and then that way measure and you would know how many you you need if you were only here at at you know three inches because you're using a small thin you know baby weight yarn with a small hook like maybe a, a E or F then you're going to need to re do more repeats of course but just you just measure you just do your 17 times the number of repeats to get your base and then here when you get to the end then we'll add our three chains to go up and begin so go ahead I'm going to just do two repeats just to show you how to work the edges and you could use this pattern for a scarf you could, if you wanted a scarf this would be nice two repeats is more than enough or you could do um uh, blankets from baby size all the way to a king size blanket you would just need to do your repeats I'm going to be changing colors from pink and white so the first two the first two rows I'm going to do in one color and then once you do that if you want to re change colors every row you can or you could do you know four rows of one color then four ro rows that's all going to be up to you how you decide to decide your blanket but this is a really cute little pattern and I think you'll enjoy it Okay everyone to begin I'm going to start with the pink yarn, my J size hook and a medium weight yarn. You can use whatever color you want or you could do it all a select color. You could change colors after every pattern. It's up to you after several rows, totally up to you. So here I'm going to do that little swatch with the two repeats. So I'm going to start with 34 chains so that we could do the repeat because we would have, remember our repeat is 17 chains but then we need, I'm going to be doing double crochet so I'm going to need an extra one to go up so here I'm going to go ahead and start and do my 34 chains so I'll come back when I've done my 34 chains to show you how we work our pattern okay since I'm only going to work two little sets for you I've done 34 uh, chains so here to begin our pattern and this is going to repeat throughout our rows here what we're going to do here beginning on the fourth chain from the excuse me uh, in the third chain from the hook is that one two three oh here's one two three on the fourth chain from the hook i'm going to do a double crochet so this does not count as uh, a chain it's just the loop on the hook so here's one one two and three let me see if i could put it a little bit closer so you could see better so here's one, two, three. On the fourth chain, I'm going to begin my first double crochet. The first three count as one double crochet here and throughout the pattern. So to do the double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, go into that fourth chain there, pull up. I have three loops of yarn on my hook. 
and now I'm going to pull through the first two and then the second two. So here comes one, so this counts as one, two, and then I'm going to do um, seven more of these, uh, so it would be six more. One, two, and I'm going to have eight total including this here. One, two, three, four, so you're doing one double crochet in each stitch in each chain. Five, six, got this here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Okay, just like that. Let me count to make sure. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now here's going to be our first little pattern. We're going to do chain two, one, two, and then beginning in the same chain here, I'm going to, the same chain that I did my last stitch, I'm going to go back into that space and do uh, one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. So here, yarn over, go back in here. So this is one. And now go into each of the next stitches, each chase two, three, four, whoops, five, six. seven and eight just like that and so here let me make sure I have one two three four five seven eight okay so here when we go to the bottom we want to replicate this pattern only in the reverse so here we added two chains so here we're going to skip two chains one two Beginning on the third chain, you're going to do one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches, eight chains. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. seven and eight now we're just repeating what we did here on our first one here so it's one two three four five six seven eight now here on top you chain two one two into that same stitch you're going to do one half double cro one double crochet in each of the next eight and coming starting here in the same chain there one Two, you're gonna do have eight, two, three, three, four, five, six. seven and eight so that would be my first row for this pattern and and I have found that doing two little patterns like this makes a really pretty scarf because it still gives you that little design um, but it's still thick enough to wrap around you so that's another scarf you could do a scarf pattern with just two or even three repeats so remember every repeat is going to be 17 chains so here I had two of those so then I had um, uh, excuse me here my 34 little chains here to begin so that's the first, this is the first row. If you want to continue with the solid colors,
then we were gonna I'm gonna come back and we'll do row two if you want to change colors I'm gonna show you how you would change colors so here if you're gonna change colors before finishing your last stitch and I if you're gonna be changing colors every other row um, it, it's totally up to you uh, sometimes I do it every two rows but I want to show you how you would change the color so here if you're changing colors after every row remember you have to do your first chain your foundation chain and then row row uh, your first row so here you would yarn over go into your last stitch pull out your loop so you have one two three before you pull out the last here I go through the first two two before I do the last two then here you're gonna switch to your new color I'm gonna just I'm not gonna tie this off because I just want to show you how it would be then you would pull the last color would be your white so here now you're ready to go up with your white and then you just tighten this up tie your new color there and cut off your pink and then you're gonna hide these tails in your work when you work but then you would just chain your three to go up like I'm going to show you here how to do row two you would do it in white okay so let me go ahead and um, film the Spanish portion then we'll come back and uh, do row two okay so I filmed that Spanish section so let me show you once you get to the end here you're going to do your last stitch to change color your last stitch you go in pull your yarn through your first two then here in your second two is where I'm going to change colors. I already cut this because I had filmed the Spanish one, but your yarn would still be connected. So here you would just get your new color, whatever color that is, and you could do uh, color changes Oops, uh, after the each row, after four rows, five rows, whatever you decide. So you're going to get your white color, cut your pink color, or whatever color you're using. You're gonna tie it. Some people do not make knots. I do. I. They say that nothing falls apart. I don't know how that is possible. So here we're gonna move on to row two. To go on to row two, I'm gonna remember work these uh, tails in there to hide them. So here for row two, you're gonna repeat row one. You're gonna go one, two, three. Turn your work over. If you do not want your work to have the little ridges then work through the entire chain I'm going to have I want mine to have it um, the little ridges uh, so I'm going to be working in the back loops only throughout the work I'm going to hide since I'm working in the high in the back here I'm going to hide my tails it's going to be a little hard to see the first one but here I want to show you where if you could see the the chain it has like a front loop and then this other part here this is where we're going to be working only the back loop we're going to leave the front loops free so here you're going to yarn over and then i'm going to work in the back loop the first one you might not be able to see it because i'm going to be hiding the tail so if i'm going to leave that tail out just for a moment so you could see where you would work into you would yarn over and you would go here into the back see how the front loop is free then you would do your double crochets there in the back loop and you would work one two three four five six seven eight just like we did before and then we we're going to have um excuse me here Okay, I reworked my decrease over again so that I could hide that tail. Let me show you how I did that. I don't know why I didn't show you. Now that I, you could see where I worked there, I'm going to go in there, put my tails in there to hide them. Work my first stitch there. I didn't want to show you the first time because then it's hard to see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to do my decrease there. So my tails are hidden there. So that is how it would look. And now I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next one, two, three, four, five stitches. So here in the back loop only as I'm hiding that tail. One, two, three. Oops, that tail didn't want to get in there. something's banging let me move this it's got it's caught on my yarn 
sometimes it's hard um, it's filming by yourself because you don't have anybody to help you move things around or set up anything but there and then here so here we have one two three four five six seven because we decreased over the first two seven One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the bottom, remember, we chain two to do the little point. Here, since I'm working in the back loops, if you're working through the whole chain, then you work through the whole chain here. But here, also in these points, we're going to have to work in the back. So here, remember we had eight stitches. We're going to have eight stitches here. So here, uh, this is our seventh. This was the seventh. So here's eight right there. And now to continue making that little point, you're going to chain two, one, two. Now you're going to do your first of eight double crochets into that first chain there. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, six, and all this stuff, seven, and eight. Now remember in the bottom we chain we skip two stitches, two chains, one, two. So here you're gonna skip the next two stitches, one, two, and your next stitch goes here to make that bottom point. So here you're gonna do eight double crochet, I mean actually seven going up, and then the eighth one will be on the chain. One, two, three, four. Uh oh, lost that stitch. Five, six, seven, and then your eighth one goes over your first chain right there. Eight. Now, once again, we're at the top of that little point. See how you're st uh, starting to be able to see the pattern more? So here we're going to chain two, one, two. Remember, see how we did not decrease in this area? You only do your decreases in the beginning of your row and the end. So only on the edges. No decreases in the middle. Okay, guys, you're going to be working through here. The decreases are only in the end so that it can keep your work straight. If you didn't do that, it's going to look kind of weird like that. This way we want to make it kind of straight. To make it look like the edge of the blanket so here now you're going to go ahead and start working your eight double crochets but remember over the last two we're going to uh, do a decrease so here you're going to go one two three four five Six and then here in these last two we're going to do a decrease so here it's going to be seven we're going to do one go through two yarn over again go through the next one so that would be our seventh one so here one two three four five six seven our last one will be on top of the third chain. So yarn over in top of the third chain and the back loop only. So here, eight. Just like that. And if you want to change colors, then you would do the same thing we did here. Of course, if you want to keep them in the same color or um, usually it's easier if you do like three or four rows of the same color than switch. I'm just doing this to give you an idea of what the color would be. So then all you do um, is repeat 
what you did here. Repeat row two as many times as you need to. Because remember here, once we go up here, we're repeating. We're going to be, um, this counts as our chain three counts as one double crochet. Then we're going to be um, repeating, um, this is me, repeating uh, the row there to make sure that we have the same amount of stitches. So you're just going to repeat row two as many times as you need. I'm going to do a few more rows and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, I've added a few more rows. These I uh, changed color after every two rows just to give it a little bit more depth, but you can make it all one color. Let me see if I can move back here. So see, you could see the little ridges. Um, can you see them from the side? Maybe it's a little bit more. So it gives you a little bit of that texture. So this is the front, and then this would be the wrong side, but you could still see that ridge there. So that's what happens, what's created by going into the back loop. If you don't like that, then you can just go through the whole item, through the whole chain, excuse me. And then see how here, by doing the decrease, it keeps your edges nice and even. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I also wanted to let everybody know that this weekend, January 11th through the 12th, Saturday and Sunday of 2014, I will be at Anaheim, California at the CHA, the Craft and Hobby Association Mega Show. So if you're there at CHA, it's not it's not a open to the public, it's an industry show, but if you're there, um, stop by and say hello. Or if you live in the area, maybe you would like to stop on Sunday after about 4 o'clock. I should be free if you guys want to stay, stop by and say hello. Maybe we could meet somewhere in front of the convention center. I'd like to get to meet you guys if you're in that area. Have a great day. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Click the like button. And thank you so much for helping me grow my channel. Please be sure to share my videos with your friends and family and on your social media pages. Have a great day. And remember always that God loves you.